everybody, Todd Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well. This is video number two for today, and this one's a tropical update. We're just about done with Francine at this point. It's now remnant low. We're gonna probably see her out of here by tomorrow at this point. You can tell it looks like a shadow of what it once was on satellite here. Elongated shower and storm activity, not much in the way of even severe weather produced for it. This will be a relatively strong storm that ended up making landfall but might be pretty uh unmemorable at the current point in time we're still getting reports in though so things may change with that but we will probably end up seeing this name again in the next four years i'll put it that way still we need to keep everyone that was affected by francine in our thoughts and prayers nonetheless that being said we still have two other areas of interest currently right now invest 94l has a 30% chance of developing, but at one point this had a much better chance. It was all the way up to about 70 to even 80%. This has now dropped all the way to 30 and the environment is expected to become less favorable. We'll get more details on that in just a little bit here. We also have Tropical Depression 7, which formed yesterday, and this is expected to become Gordon here. And we'll get a look at this really quick while we're at it. In the short term, this will become a tropical storm. Doesn't look like it strengthens beyond that. This environment is kind of mixed match. Some parts of it are better suited for tropical development. Others are very hostile for it. But in any case though, by tomorrow, it does look like we will get tropical storm Gordon out of this tropical depression here. And then we also have to watch this area over here towards West Africa as this will most likely become our next tropical invest at the very least. I won't go as far as to say a depression or storm yet because like I said, the environment here, there's patches where you would have conditions suitable for development and other areas where development is unlikely. That's also why TD7 here does not look that good. You can actually see the satellite imagery here on the top right corner. But also, there's another system that we're watching will brings the total to four and that's actually over towards the Pacific here. This is a Elena here. I probably pronounced that wrong, but we have Tropical Storm Elena, which formed today. This became a tropical depression overnight last night, and this is set to actually hit the Baja here. We do expect this to strengthen just a little bit more, but nothing too, too crazy. We might end up covering this this weekend. But in any case, though, this is what our current forecast track is looking like. It's going to pass right in between the... This is going to go through the southern part of the Baja here and pass right in between there and Mexico. And while this doesn't seem initially like this would be of major significance to the U.S. here, we can get some of this moisture over here to maybe get into the southwestern states here. And this area has been struggling with wildfires for a bit now, so... To get some of that ambient moisture, regardless of whether we get rainfall from it or not, will be a very big deal here. So we're hoping that we can get some help with wildfires from this tropical system here. So might be some positives that actually come out of this more so than anything else. If you are in Mexico, however, you do need to be on watch. We do have tropical storm watches in effect right now, along with a couple of tropical storm warnings towards the southern Baja. Like I said, we'll get more. We'll go into the details a bit more. As so we head into tomorrow, we'll we'll try and go live for this. We'll see if this can, we'll see if we can make this work. But in any case, though, as far as our projected intensities of each system here, we're going to start out with Elena here. Not really going to strengthen too much further than what we're already seeing right now. Max winds are predicted at about 50 miles an hour. We look at the spaghetti models here. This is in regards to the track. Nothing really showing a direct U.S. impact at this point. It looks like it's all going to be the Baja and Mexico at this point in time. Storm actually looks pretty decent on satellite, considering the state that it's in right now. But as we go further along, I do expect it to organize just a little bit more. There is some wind shear to the south that is kind of impeding the storm as well. So let's go ahead and look at some intensity models with this. And none of these bring it to hurricane, which is great news. There is a chance that it could strengthen up to a slightly stronger tropical storm, but still no indicators of a category one developing with this one. So some good news to be had there. I expect impacts to be relatively light. Still have to be watchful, of course, things such as flash flooding, tornado threat, etc. So let's go ahead and take a look at the forecast for 
TD7 right here. So look at it on satellite here. You could already see it in the top right corner anyway, but still. The system is struggling a bit because there is a lot of dry air around this part of the Atlantic. Wind shear is a factor as well, so it's an uphill battle for this system. Not to say that it can't become a much stronger storm, but I wouldn't expect too much more out of it. It's pretty much a similar deal like what we had with uh, Elena over there over towards the Pacific. 50 mile per hour storm max at this current point in time. Um, just look at how this thing's kind of struggling along. It's keeping that center of circulation, which is pretty impressive though, nonetheless. But this is expected to mainly stay out towards the Atlantic. It doesn't necessarily have an indication that it just goes away though either. So something to still keep an eye on. But in any case though, its peak strength actually looks like it's towards the end of the model run here as we go towards September 17th. So while I'm not holding out any hope for this thing to be anything significant, still worth watching. I don't think this is going to impact land. I'm pretty sure this is going to end up taking a northward turn at some point. But at least in the meanwhile, it's something to watch in the uh, tropics here because for a while, we've had a very much below average season here. So past the spaghetti models here, let's go ahead and take a quick look at that. There are a few models here that do try to push this to category one status. So this will be another name hurricane for the record books at the very least. But again, like I said before, not expecting too much in the way of land impacts currently. Models are kind of on a uh, and half and half type of spread here where we do have a few of these that do push this off to the west a bit more. But even so, there's no uh, indications of land in sight at this current point in time. But it is starting to get past that 50 degree west line. Once we get to the 60 degree west line, that's all land at this point. So still, like I said, it's still very much worth watching at this point. While it's not anything that I'm particularly concerned with at this point in time either, though. But in any case, though, interesting stuff going on with what's likely to be Tropical Storm Gordon. So looking at the environment we're going to start out with Gordon here, along with the rest of the Atlantic. Here's the wind shear that was responsible for tearing Francine apart, along with this trough that's going to be coming in and a second and an adjacent trough to go with that. This is going to kind of keep those cool temperatures in the picture here for the eastern half of the U.S. for the next few days. And actually, Francine will help, uh, help uh, along with that a little bit more. Uh, over towards the Gulf, winter is going to be pretty high, so it should keep tropical development pretty limited at this point. Towards the main development region itself, the wind shear does lighten, so with that being the case here, I do think that there could be at least a chance for another name storm, if not two even. We are in peak hurricane season, so it really just depends on what happens over here towards the region. I do see a pattern where we're going to have quite a few active storm systems coming off West Africa, so... Potential is always going to be there. As we go further along here, it looks like the Gulf kind of shuts down a little bit in regards to the wind shear. Wind shear actually gets pretty notable. So I'm not really concerned about this region as of right now. Really, I think a lot of our attention for development will be focused towards the main development region, maybe some parts of the Caribbean. And then also the Eastern Pacific kind of catches my eye too. Also, if you look towards the bottom left of the screen here, while we have the top right occupied with our satellite, you can see the moisture content over here. Still battling with that dry air from the Sahara. So no real surprises there. I think that's gonna still be the main limiting factor when it comes to tropical development in the Atlantic. We'll shift gears and we'll run a similar deal here. We'll have the, we'll have the humidities and the mid-levels of the Pacific here in the bottom left corner. And then of course, we'll still have our satellite. This time we're gonna put focus on Elena. I hope I have it right. As you can see, here's that wind shear to the south that we're talking about. And as this pushes off to the north, that's gonna be a big reason why we have this storm remaining pretty weak here. Also, pretty strong wind shear to the north too, associated with the trough at this point, even though the flow is relatively zonal at this point. Still, that's going to help keep this storm system pretty limited in regards to intensity here. But the hope is, like I said before, that we get some of that ambient moisture pushing up into the southwest here. 
potential is definitely there let's just hope that it actually ends up coming into fruition here models are kind of varying as to how that ends up panning out but i do think we'll have at least a couple chances of maybe even some showers over towards arizona maybe southern california but we'll really just have to wait and see how things pan out there but in any case though let's go ahead and take a look at what our ensembles are showing in regards to development in the future this is of course gordon interesting to note that we see a featured that we see uh, quite a bit of um, model guidance showing some prominent feature trying to develop over here towards the north central atlantic not an area that you usually would suspect because the waters here aren't quite as warm but still hospitable enough you do see another feature here kind of pop up over here towards the uh, azores we'll have to keep an eye on that as well but in any case though does look like the tropics are going to stay pretty busy from the looks of things and then another thing that i'm kind of keeping an extra close eye on is right towards the end of this model run i'm going to stop it do see a low pressure area pop up here it's just a lone one so i'm not going to read into it too heavily but it is something that kind of catches my eye here so like i said we're going to be uh maybe doing one potentially two updates and slash outlooks a week but we'll have to just see how things pan out from that point i know this video is running a little bit long appreciate you guys for tuning in by the way you know what to do if you like the video smash that like button and decimate that subscribe button and i will see you guys in the next one till then take care and have an awesome rest of your evening